Hello, Scholar Academy teachers. Uh, this is Shannon Proctor teaching you about Desmos activities. Uh, what I want to start with is how we're even going to get here. So I just started from my Google page. I googled Desmos activities and it's going to be the first thing that pops up, Desmos classroom activities. You can also get there by typing in teacher.desmos.com. From here you can see that there's lots of really great activities. Um, you can browse them or you can search I searched the particular topic of proportion since that's what my students are discussing and it pulls up a bunch of activities. When you look at those search results you can start seeing a little bit more reading about them. I decided to go into the turtle time trials. I have already started this activity with my students so you're going to see some interesting things that you won't see unless you're also doing activities but if I scroll all the way down here it gives little screenshots of different things that the students are going to be seeing but you can also do a student preview and you can go through the activity watching the videos, practicing typing in the answers to see what kinds of things the students are going to be presented with. Since I have already assigned this, it's going to look a little bit different, but the way that I assigned it is I clicked here on the assign button. I actually click on the drop down arrow because assign to classes is an option that I haven't set up yet. You can create classes within the Desmos instance and I haven't done that. So I just created a single session code that created this line here that does include the code, tells how long it's going to be available for, how many students have already joined. You can also view the dashboard, which I'll get to that in just a second. To present this to your students, to help them get logged into this activity, click on these three dots here and student link. And it pops this up onto the screen. Very clear instructions for the students. Student.desmos.com, they type in this code here. Now I'm going to go into my uh, incognito browser to where I've already typed in that code so you can see the experience that they would have. I'm going to join and as you join this you have options to sign in with Google. If we had Google school accounts that would be great. Sign in with Desmos. If you create classes within Desmos they would sign in here. Um, I just click continue without signing in. They're still accessing the activity that I created and that I'm hosting because they entered that code. So continue without signing in. type in their name, remind them to choose a school appropriate name or choose, choose their first name only, and here is that activity. So as a student, I can uh, participate in this activity and there are directions as you go through. Press play to watch a short animation, then write a story about what you see. So I'm going to press play here. Looks like this turtle started out at the part way through the lane. Blue started all the way back here, but still beat him. I'm going to watch that one more time. Okay, I'm going to write a story about what I see. Pink turtle had a head start. Blue turtle was fast and still won. Now I can share with the class. As I share with the class, you can see I've got all of these other student responses that I can look at. We can, as a class, we can pause and we can talk about all the different responses and see how creative students are, see if we agree or disagree, and see what we can learn from each of them. I'm going to pause here in the student experience and I'm going to return to the teacher experience. I've invited my students, I've shared this code with them, they're all participating and involved. Now I'm going to view the dashboard. As a teacher, it's popping that up one more time, just going to close that out. As a teacher I can see where all of my students are in this activity. So you can see each of my students has already completed that first exercise. They wrote their story. Some students have made it onto the next exercise. The check marks mean they made it to the next exercise and they got it right. X's mean they got it wrong. So we might need to work with some of those students or pause and go back and review with them. And you can see who's lagging behind, who has completed everything. And so you get a lot of great information here um, within the dashboard. Different things that you can do, the snapshots, teacher and student screens. Um, you can also anonymize where it creates fake names. Um, so there's really great things. You can even just pause, make sure that everybody stops, have a conversation, because a lot of times students like to continue on even when we're talking, so you can pause that exercise as well. I want to just continue a little bit further on in the lesson so you can see just the kind of cool things that we can do. We've read through all these responses. Let's go to the next one. Now we're going to take that visual exercise and collect the data from it. So we can see, we're going to press play again. It's already got some of the times, or the times, all of the pink turtles distances recorded. The blue turtles distances are not all recorded so I need to fill these in. Let's watch the video and do that. 
Up here, you can see it's ticking off the time. Down here, it's ticking off where those turtles are at any given point in time. So when I watch it again this next time, I'm going to try and pause it at the two second mark. Okay, two seconds. It looks like the blue turtle, four feet, five feet, six feet. It's a little bit after two seconds and a little bit after that. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the six feet. <clears throat> Let's keep going. I'm going to try and pause it at three seconds. A little bit too far, but it looks like at three seconds, um, maybe I'm going to try the 9.5. Okay, check my work. Yep, yep. Oh, I was off a little bit there, but everything else lined up. So again, the students, after they've entered their answers, they can check their work and see the visual aspect as it relates to the data. Continuing on a little bit more. Now we can take that data, go further. What's the speed? Here's my favorite part. We now have another turtle. We can see that new turtle. We can also go and see the graphs of those, and that's what we're really looking at. So now we can take this third turtle. We saw what it looked like. We don't have a table this time, but as I watch this third turtle down the lane, I get to adjust where that line goes to try and make it match. We can also, let me skip ahead, we also have a fourth lane and a fourth turtle. I get to create the equation and students are learning as they're doing this and they're seeing these relationships. And so when I type in the equation D equals 0 0.5 and I press play, writing that equation D equals 0 0.5 T and then pa or playing the video to see what that does. You can see all of those turtles moving and my turtle in lane four is moving at the speed that I set. I can also change that now. It's too slow, too boring. Now I'm going to change that speed and make it 5t. Let's see what that turtle does now. Now that turtle is going at the rate that I chose with the equation and this activity can be a really great um, way to show students how we can collect data, how we can relate that data to tables, graphs, equations, etc. There's lots of other Desmos activities. This is just the one that I chose today because it related to the concept that I was doing. I encourage you to go to that teacher Desmos and uh, explore the activities, see what ones you can incorporate into your own lessons. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.